Hello everyone and welcome to The Order. Today I'll be teaching you how to build a PC. A lot of people think that building a PC is an incredibly difficult task that requires a degree well, today I'm going to debunk this misconception with my basic PC assembly tutorial. This tutorial aims to be a basic PC build guide which offers the general guidelines that you need to build your first PC or to rebuild your current one. Before you begin your build, I suggest that you watch this entire video because there are several clarifications for specific situations that you need to know first. Here are the tools that you will need. You will need an ESD wristband, a pair of ESD gloves, a Phillips head screwdriver, wire cutters, zip or twist ties, a rotary tool with a hexagon slot bit, thermal compound and also you can get some small plastic trays to sort your screws. And now a few warnings before you begin. Be very careful and don't use extensive force in the assembly process. The components are designed to be together, don't force them together. Follow each step precisely. If you run into a situation where you cannot proceed, check your components manual and remember to ground yourself. Now a PC has 7 main components, a motherboard, a CPU, a GPU, RAM, a hard drive, a PSU and a case. Every other possible system configuration, for example if we add a second GPU or more RAM, is a variation of this main component selection. Let's begin. First start off with the case. When buying a brand new case, you will have an accessory case with it. The basic items that need to be in that bundle are the motherboard standoffs, screws and the case speaker. Usually new cases come with the fans pre-installed, if not the installation is very simple, place the fans on the appropriate slots and secure them with 4 screws. In most cases the direction of airflow of the fan is determined by the position of the stator, but some fans have rotation and airflow markers. And here is a basic airflow diagram. Front, side and bottom fans intake, while top and rear fans exhaust. Now let's remove the side panels and mount the PSU. This case has a top mounted PSU. To install it, simply slide the unit in, align it with the holes at the back and secure it with 4 screws. And here is an example of a case with the bottom mounted PSU. Next we'll focus on the motherboard tray. You will notice that there are holes on the tray in which you have to mount the motherboard standoffs. The configuration of these standoffs depends on the type of your motherboard. This is a mid-tower case and it supports mini ITX, micro ATX and standard ATX motherboards. Larger cases like full towers support larger PCBs like E-ATX, XL-ATX boards and others. Here are two diagrams which show the sizes of different motherboards and also the positions of the standoffs for the different form factors. My motherboard is a standard ATX one, so we'll need to mount 9 standoffs. After locating the position of the holes, mount the standoffs. Then take the hexagon tool and very gently tighten them. Moving on, let's mount the motherboard in. When mounting it, be sure to leave the plastic socket cover on. If you don't have the plastic cover, mount the CPU. Here is how you do it. The CPU fits in only one way. Release the arm on the side and open up the socket. Then align the CPU with the markings. And then mount it in place. Before you put in the motherboard, don't forget to mount the IO shield plate on the case. Personally, I forgot to mount it last time and I noticed it right after I had completed the install. Align the plate with the hole and then snap it in place. Now align the board with the standoffs. And tighten the 9 screws that hold it in place. It is time to mount the optical drive and the hard drive. This is an old case and it doesn't have any toolless features, but modern cases use brackets instead of screws to mount everything in place. Mounting the optical drive is simple. Slide the drive in so that it aligns with the front of the case and the mounting holes on the side. 
and then tighten its screws. Next up, the hard drive. The procedure is almost the same, but you must align the hard drive so that it won't get in the way of the GPU or other components. Now let's connect them to the motherboard and the PSU. They have only two connectors, SATA power and SATA data. You can't mess them up, they fit only one way. First connect the power connectors. Then one end of the data cables go into the devices and the other to the motherboard. Now let's connect the front panel connectors. I have to connect the power and reset button, the power LED and the hard drive activity LED and the front USB ports. My case lacks front panel audio but I will show you how to connect it nevertheless. Let's start off with the front panel audio connector. There are two types of connectors, AC97 and HD audio. These connectors are not backwards compatible, this means that they are not interchangeable. In your motherboard's manual, see what type of audio header does it have and where is it located and then plug in the case connector. It usually fits one way so you can't mess this up. But for example, if you have an AC97 connector on your case and an HD audio header on your board and vice versa, you need to buy an adapter. Now locate your motherboard's front panel header, it's usually at the bottom. Here is the diagram and here are the front panel plugs. Let's start off with the switches. Their orientation usually doesn't matter, you can connect them either way. But if they are marked, connect them as specified. The LEDs can be connected only in a specific way. Usually there is a mark on the front panel plugs that indicates the positive and or negative lead. I forgot to mention that we need to connect one more thing to the front panel header and that is the case speaker. It can be found in the accessories bundle of your case. The speaker connects only one way and also has markings for the positive and or negative leads. The front panel USB 2.0 connectors go in one way but you can't mess this up because they also fit in one way. Now let's make all of the PSU connections to the motherboard. In this case we need to connect the 20 plus 4 pin ATX connector and the 4 slash 8 pin CPU connector. Let's install the RAM. The RAM sticks fit in only one way. Open up the notches on both sides and place the dim in. Then gently press on one side and then the other and then secure the notches. And here it is once again. Moving on, it is time to install the CPU cooler. You can check out my thermal compound tutorial, it will show you the proper way to apply thermal compound to your CPU and GPU. I am using the box cooler. First clean the base from the old thermal compound, then put the retention system in the correct position. Apply a small P of thermal compound in the center. If you are using the cooler for the first time, it has pre-applied compound. Then place the cooler on the CPU and press in the pins in an X pattern. Then connect the CPU fan to the CPU fan header on the board. While you're at it, connect all of the case fans to the appropriate locations. In my case, I have a single fan that connects to the motherboard and three fans that connect to the PSU via the Molex connectors. Now let's mount the GPU. Locate your PCI Express X16 slot and carefully mount the GPU in place. This board has an automatic PCI Express slot clip system, but others may have systems that are locked manually. After mounting the GPU in the slot, mount the screw which holds in the GPU bracket. And finally connect the PCI Express power connector. Looks like we have finished all of the installations and connections and the only thing left to do is to tidy up the cables. There are two options available for that, you can use zip ties or twist ties. Here I have done my cable management as best as I can, I personally use twist ties because they can be reused afterwards. Unfortunately I don't have a modular PSU and my case doesn't have any cable management holes. Also, there is no way to show you a universal cable management technique because every case has a specific layout. Before putting on the side panels, it is always a good idea to check if the system is working properly. For that reason, I'm gonna go a bit old school. This is my Dell 1110, a 17-year-old monitor. I got, I got it a couple of years ago, it was broken, but I repaired it. And until a couple of months ago, it used to be my main monitor. 
We Eastern Europeans, we're humble, we make do with what we've got. Now let's turn on the system. And as you can see, the system is working. And the last step is to mount the side panels back in place. You can also check out my basic PC disassembly tutorial. It will show you the proper way to take apart your PC for cleaning and or maintenance. I would like to note that it is impossible to make a universal PC build guide that features every possible component and component combination due to the fact that there are simply too many components and new ones come out every day. So if you run into any trouble, please refer to your component manual. And so this concludes my basic PC assembly tutorial. If you have any tech related questions, feel free to send them in, like, comment and subscribe for more tech videos. This is the Tech Order. Signing out.